Features of a quality screening program ensure that the approach to vision screening is appropriate for the age and abilities of the child. In this brief video, we will review the use of the 5-foot VIP LIA for distance visual acuity screening. The most commonly measured type of acuity is called recognition visual acuity. Recognition visual acuity is defined as the ability to discern certain optotypes or symbols, letters, numbers, or figures at a specified distance. The recognition visual acuity test, used to measure acuity, must use the same number of optotypes that decrease in size proportionally from one acuity level to the next smaller level, called logmore progression. LIA symbols are considered best practice for use in preschool aged children, which are children ages 3, 4, and 5 years old. The LIA symbols consist of four well-standardized picture optotypes that blur equally. Preferred presentation of the LIA symbols for preschool aged children are single surrounded optotypes at a 5 foot test distance. Surrounding single optotypes with four crowding bars creates an isolated effect and improves amblyopia detection. When conducting visual acuity screenings, you will screen each eye individually and should follow best practices for occlusion. Acceptable occluders for children ages 3, 4, and 5 years old include adhesive eye patches, 2-inch surgical tape, and occluder glasses with opaque or frosted lenses. Paper or other homemade occluders, tissues, cups, paper, or plastic, and hands should not be used because children can easily circumvent these types of occlusion. Screening personnel need to monitor occlusion carefully because children with reduced vision in one eye often attempt to use their better eye by peeking. Children that are uncooperative with patching or occlusion of either eye should be referred to an eye care provider. Prior to the screening, evaluate the screening space to ensure that the lighting is adequate and that there is nothing in the room that will distract the children. Place the light cabinet on a table. Secure a chair for the child as well as for the screener and an assistant. Arrange the child's chair so that the cards, when placed on the lampstand, are five feet from the child's eyes. The child's eyes should be at the same height as the cards on the stand. Greet the child who you are about to screen. Though greeting the child requires little time, it serves three important functions. It ensures the child is comfortable and at ease, it allows you to confirm that you have the correct recording form for the child being screened, and it provides an opportunity to observe potential eye problems. Tips for greeting the child include Paying the child a compliment to help him or her feel comfortable with you. Asking his or her name and age to establish rapport. And answering any questions the child might have to help him or her feel at ease. Tell the child gently but clearly what you expect him or her to do. When greeting the child, take time to look at the child's eyes and make note of any of the following signs of a vision problem. Appearance signs. Red-rimmed swollen eyelids. Drooping eyelids. Cloudiness or haziness of cornea misaligned eyes or eyes that drift, unequal pupil size, drainage from the eyes. Behavior signs reported by parent or teacher, constant head tilt or face turn, squinting, excessive blinking, closing or covering one eye while doing near work, holding books excessively close or far from the eyes. Complaint signs. The child's teacher or caregiver may be able to tell you if the child has any of the following complaint signs of a vision problem. Teachers should be educated about behaviors that may be observed in children with possible vision problems. Headaches, nausea, or dizziness. Blurred or double vision. Unusual sensitivity to light. Even if the child passes all of their portions of your screening test, Refer them for a complete eye examination if any of these signs are observed or reported. After you've completed your observational assessment, begin visual acuity testing. Distance visual acuity using the VIP single crowded LIA symbols at 5 feet. Step 1. Testing begins by having the child practice naming the shapes with the lap card. The child must be able to match or name all four symbols and can call the symbols anything they want as long as they are consistent throughout the test. If the child cannot match or name the symbols, the child is considered untestable and should be referred to an eye care provider. Step two, using the measuring cord included with the equipment, position the child's eyes five feet from where the cards will be presented and ensure that the symbols are at eye height of the child. Step three, place the occluder glasses on the child's face in order to cover the left eye so the child can only use their right eye for the test. If the child is wearing glasses, do not remove them. Children are always screened with their glasses on. Step four, have the child name the symbols with the right side of the baseline flipbook. 
If there is ever any question about which symbol the child is referring to, the child should be asked to point to the symbol on the lap card. Step 5. After successful completion of the right eye baseline flipbook, confirm the current age of the child being screened and select the appropriate age-specific disc card. There are eight symbols on the right side of each wheel and eight symbols on the left side of each wheel. Ensure that the disc is turned so that the right eye side of the card is facing the child. Turn the wheel until the first symbol, numbered 3R1 for 3-year-olds or 4R1 for 4- and 5-year-olds, is in the window. Place the disc card under the light in the stand and have the child name or match the corresponding Leah symbol. After the child gives the response, rotate the wheel clockwise to the next symbol numbered 3R2 for 3-year-olds or 4R2 for 4- and 5-year-olds. If the child misses either one or none of the first four symbols, R1 through R4, continue testing with the successive symbols, R5 through R8. If the child completes all of the symbols without missing any symbols or only misses one symbol in each set of four, they have passed the vision screening with their right eye and you will continue testing with the left eye. If the child misses two or more symbols in either the first set of four or the second set of four symbols, the child should be referred to an eye care professional for a vision exam. Step 6. To test the left eye, place the occluder glasses on the child's face in order to cover the right eye so the child can only use their left eye for the test. Step 7. Have the child name the shapes with the left side of the baseline flipbook. If there is ever any question about which symbol the child is referring to, the child should be asked to point to the symbol on the lap card. Step 8. Flip the disc card to ensure that the left eye side of the card will be facing the child. Turn the wheel until the first symbol, numbered 3L1 for 3-year-olds or 4L1 for 4- and 5-year-olds, is in the window. Place the disc card under the light in the stand and have the child name or match the corresponding Leah symbol. After the child gives the response, rotate the wheel clockwise to the next symbol numbered 3L2 for 3-year-olds or 4L2 for 4- and 5-year-olds. If the child misses either one or none of the first four symbols, L1 through L4, continue testing with the successive symbols, L5 through L8. If the child completes all of the symbols without missing any symbols or only misses one symbol in each set of four, they have passed the vision screening with their left eye and distance visual acuity testing is complete. A referral is made for a comprehensive eye examination if the child has any of the appearance, behavior, or complaint signs of a possible vision problem, if a child is shy, uncooperative, or who will not allow occlusion, if a child cannot match or name the symbols during the test preparation, or if a child is unable to match or name at least three of four symbols in any set of four with either eye. Rescreenings are at the discretion of the screener and should happen at least one day following the non-pass vision screening, but in no case later than four to six weeks. If a rescreening is not feasible, a referral should be made. <laughs>